The Southern Hemisphere summer is almost here, so that means it's time for some world-class tournament golf in Australia. Some of the biggest names will head to Melbourne for the World Cup, but it all starts this week at the Australian Open, where two-time major champion Jordan Spieth is the headline act. Golfing World caught up with Golf Australia CEO Stephen Pitt about the upcoming tournament schedule and Spieth once again coming back to Australia. There's a special connection there when you think about him winning the Australian Open a couple of years ago and then going on to have the amazing year that he had winning two majors, getting to world number one. The trophy and the names that have won it means a lot to him. He's a great student of the game. So uh, for the people of Sydney to see him competing with Adam, it's going to be a great week of golf. After the Australian Open, it's off to the famous Melbourne Sandbelt for the World Cup. The event is returning to its team golf roots. Day one and three are alternate shot, day two and four best ball play. Last time the World Cup was held in Australia in 2013, local boys Jason Day and Adam Scott were the winners. You always want to have the best players playing in your country and the World Cup will certainly deliver uh, a number of the world's best players. Does it turn out to be as exciting as it looks like it's going to be on paper with the, you know, the different format and the foursomes and the four ball. I think everyone's really excited to see how that, that plays out. This time, 2013 Masters champion Adam Scott is teaming up with Mark Leishman. And the pair are hoping their local knowledge of the famed Melbourne Sandbelt and especially this year's host venue Kingston Heath will lead to another hometown win. It's got a great history in terms of events when you think back some of the great events that have been held there. Uh, you know, the one that really sticks out is probably the 2009 uh, Masters that Tiger was at, which was just a landmark event in Australia and Kingston Heath was a great venue and handled the crowds uh, really, really well. It's a great golf course to play and uh, the players, you know, clearly love it as a venue. It's been another great year for Aussies in the professional ranks. Jason Day is the current world number one. He won three times, including the prestigious Players' Championship. Adam Scott won twice, and Greg Chalmers, Aaron Baddeley, and Rod Pampling also all lifted PGA Tour trophies. Throw in Min Ji Lee winning twice on the LPGA Tour, and Australian golf is booming. The performance of our top players has a really marked impact on the health of the game and Australian crowds love seeing their top players and you, know, you go back to the Greg Norman era and Greg coming back and playing in Australia, the impact that has had. You know, Curry Webb uh, in the girls game has had an enormous impact and been a great favourite of Australian crowds and that translates into interest in the game and health of the game, so it's really important. And if the form of the Australian amateurs this year is any indicator, the hometown fans will have plenty to be cheering about for many years to come. 20-year-old Curtis Luck started his year by winning a pro tournament in his hometown of Perth. He then went to America and won the prestigious US Amateur Championship before backing that up with victory at the Asia-Pacific Amateur Championship. It wasn't a bolt out of the blue. I think he's been playing well for a while and, and hopefully that'll just keep going. Uh, he's obviously not going to turn pro for a while now because he's got an amazing year ahead of him with the US Open the uh, Masters Tournament and then the Open Championship playing in, in all of those, it's, that's an incredible opportunity. So he'll get a lot out of that. Curtis was also a member of the record-breaking Eisenhower Trophy team in Mexico in September. Playing alongside Cameron Davis and Harrison Endicott, the Australian trio blew away the rest of the world, finishing a combined 38 under, 19 shots clear of second-placed England. To win by that margin, was, was really impressive. They had a great team environment. It wasn't about winning, it was let's dominate and show people how good we are. So full credit to them, they did an incredible job. Finding the next Jason Day is the primary focus of Golf Australia's high performance program. And based on the results put up this year all across the board, whatever the coaches and support staff are doing is clearly paying dividends as the new generation appear to be on the right track. It's a key part of the program to, to make sure that players are prepared when they turn pro that they're ready to go. You don't want them having five, six, seven years where they're bobbing up and down and not really getting to where they want to be. So our, our goal around high performance is long-term results. So we want players who can be top 10 players 
win Olympic medals, win majors. That's really what we're trying to produce. And if you can do that, those players actually give a lot back to the game and help the, the grassroots health, health of the game in, in Australia.